We're excited. I think uh, obviously having the last two weeks where we haven't had an opportunity to play um, makes us even more excited. So it'll be our first road uh, game, obviously an incredible opponent, uh, top 16 team. It's going to be a, a great matchup, you know, late night game that uh, is going to take a lot of energy. Last time we were there was uh, overtime, so I know we got to be prepared for uh, you know playing 60 plus minutes, but we're excited. Okay, let's go with questions. Justin, do you want to lead us off? Sure. Uh, so there's been a lot of talk, obviously, about all the process and protocols involved with this COVID-19 so far this year. Based on what happened last week and postponing, do you feel like it's worked and it, it worked for you guys last week as much as it can? I guess. I don't know. I don't know exactly what you mean by worked. Like, um, did we not really have anything? Um, that came up afterwards, yeah, we didn't. So <clears throat> it, to say it worked, I mean, I, I still believe in some ways we maybe panicked a little bit um, and, and in my eyes, but then again, my eyes, I wouldn't want to cancel any game. Uh, in my eyes, I don't know that we couldn't have played. But nonetheless, it was a good second half of the week that we ended up with no positive cases and felt a lot better by the time it was Friday and Saturday. So uh, whatever those protocols are, whatever kind of, no one has a great grasp. Obviously we've, um, I think our people have done a great job uh, at, at making sure our kids understand, you know, hows and the what's and the why's, uh, but it's still an ongoing process that we all got to continue to be aware of and get better at. <clears throat> Coach, SMU has won, uh, I, I think, since that last trip that you made there, I think they're 18-3 and three, um, since that game. What, what have you seen that has allowed them to uh, kind of get on a roll and, and get things moving in the right direction down there? Well, everybody would say the, the obvious thing would be offense. <clears throat> Obviously, they've done a great job scoring offense, keeping the ball, just making plays. But I think as a whole, I think, you know, obviously defensively, they've created a lot of havoc, too, I think. They're up there in tackles for loss and, and, and the things they create defensively. But I think when you see it all, uh, I think they the f three phases of the game, they play well together. They understand what they have to do to be successful, and they found a way to continue to do it. And um, I don't think it's easy. A lot of people think, well, yeah, they got a transfer quarterback from Texas. It's, it's not the easiest thing in the world, taking transfer guys, making them a part of your program, uh, making everybody around them believe in them and, and, and for them even to be a guy that's a captain and a leader. Um, it shows that they've done a really good job at a lot of different things and it's showing a lot more on Saturday, on Saturday afternoons or Saturday nights. Coach, was a silver lining of last week maybe guys like Alec Pierce getting really healthy and back to normal? How's he looking? I'm sure he's back to normal, I guess. I'm one of those guys that there is no silver lining to not playing. Um, so it, it is what it is, and you got to be able to handle it and deal with it. Um, but, you know, it, you could say he, he gets another week, but <clears throat> the reality is I'd like, love to have seen him go out, whether it was a limited amount of action last week, um, and get that real real game experience underneath his belt and back and, and, and get the confidence back. So. Obviously, it'll be the first time this week. Hopefully, his you know maybe his role can grow. Uh, as to how much, I don't know. Um, like you said, he hasn't been in that live action to have that opportunity. So we'll have to continue to see and continue to progress for what uh, what he can do on Saturday night. SMU can obviously put points on the board and um, for your guys' offense. Though, if it ends up being a shootout, what is it going to take? Um, for you guys to be able to put up, you know, 40, however many it takes? Well, however much time they give us, whatever it takes to, to get one more point than what they got. Um, you know, I'd say you got to be able to run the football, you got to be able to throw the football. I think you got to have balance. I think no matter what and what you do, um, that's a misconception I think people would think about their offenses. Oh, they throw the ball 65 times a game. No, they don't. You know, they, they do a really good job at keeping balance in what they do as opposed to, just slinging it all over the place. Now their bigger plays have come through the air, um, and I think that's what you recognize and notice. I think for us in general, offensively, we just got to find a way to create those big plays. And you know, maybe for us that comes in the running game. Maybe it comes in the throwing game. Um, 
but I don't think you can try to just say, hey, we have to do what they do. We have to throw the ball down the field. We've got to make some um, of those plays that, you know, they're going to be on sports. No, we got to do what it is that we do, uh, but we've got to find ways, whether that's running the football, whether that's throwing the football, to create those explosive plays offensively and generate some momentum. Coach Saturday was uh, uh, Coach Saturday was SMU's first game after losing its starting running back and top receiver. Wondering what you and your staff saw on film about how their offense has changed. You know, I think that's the great thing about about really good offenses, and I don't I'm not just saying they're a great. I mean, when you have a system for what you do, I don't think you have to just say, "Well, this is a specific guy." Um, I think what you've seen them do is obviously move um, like numbers, I have more of a numbers, five into eight spot, and, and maybe he plays a little bit more in the same spots that he played, and he's the jet guy and things like that. But I know that's obviously a huge loss in the speed-wise, and we played against him two years ago um, and made some huge plays on us, and he's no longer obviously able to play this year. But I think when you really see a good offense, and I mean that in a system, that when they can plug the next guy in and move a guy over, there's not nearly as much, um, you know, trying to overlap. Like, well, he he hasn't played this position. The reality is that it's, it's a really good system where they can move the next guy in. And when you've got a guy at the helm that can pull the trigger, um, you know, and move the ball around, I don't think you're just dependent on one guy. Even when we played him two years ago, you knew pretty, you know, you knew a, a good chance that on um, some of those situations that Porsche was going to get the football. And you were able to do some things or try to do some things to give yourself a better chance against a guy like that. I think where their system has grown is it's, it's not one in particular, whether they've got the guys that have made the big plays, they do an incredible job at moving the football around. And I give a lot of that credit to the quarterback. Luke, real quick, I'm sorry to jump in. I'm not sure how this process works, but um, what exactly were you guys uh, dealing with last week. I'm not sure if this has been put out there. Are you missing any players for the game on Saturday? Uh, I don't know just yet. It's still only Tuesday. Um, we dealt with some, you know, some positives <coughs> last week. How many in general? Uh, I don't know if that's by the medical staff to release. I can tell you this, that it, it wasn't as many as um, most people would believe to think that you have to cancel a football game, but I don't have uh, the control of that. Our league has never said that there's a specific number um, to what it is that you can and can't play with. Uh, it's still kind of gray and vague, and, and I tell you that there's no silver lining in not playing, and if we had to do it all over again, and if we had to do it next week, I, I would play every single one of these games, and if that means you're missing three, four, five, six, 10, 12, 20 guys, you're missing them, and your job as a coach is to get the other guys ready and give them an opportunity. So um, it's unfortunate, but hopefully as we continue to move through this season, we'll, uh, we'll find better ways to be able to handle it and, and continue to play. Thanks. Coach, does it come with um, now some reinforcing of, of what you've talked to the guys about before the season, I'm sure, of, of doing everything you can to, to limit their interaction with other people, or is it just, look, they're on a college campus and there's not a lot they can do about it outside of just <coughs> living their daily life. What do you do as a coach to kind of reinforce the, the everything you, know, you have to do as far as safety to keep these guys on the field? You can reiterate it until you're blue in the face, and it doesn't make them bad people. I mean, the one guy that probably does as little as anybody that we would think in the country is Nick Saban, and some way, somehow, he got it that didn't have it, whatever, whatever. But in some way, somehow, um, there's an opportunity for everybody to get it. And yes, you got to make sacrifices. Yes, you have to limit contacts and things. Um, but that some way, somehow, things are going to happen. And it is what it is, but we've got to continue to reiterate the sacrifices that our guys got to continue to make and limiting who that is that they're around. Um, but even if that's eight people that they're around, that those eight people might be around somebody different. So, um, you know, it's hard to tell them don't talk to their family or don't see their family. Or if they come to the game, don't give them a hug afterwards. Uh, if those things happen, those things happen. And we can't live our life in fear, but we've got to be uh, conscious of uh, what it is that we do when we're out there. Coach, you mentioned the 54 practices in three games. Uh, is the bigger concern for this Saturday any possible roster depletion, or is it maybe some rust from basically three weeks in between games? Well, it's only Tuesday, so we don't always know those things. That's the uniqueness of it. Um, 
you always worry when you haven't played in a while. Um, not that it's a first game of the year. But I think all those things kind of go hand in hand, the first time on the road. There's a lot of firsts here for us. Um, so, again, we expect ourselves to more so as a veteran team to be able to handle all the adversity and all the things that are thrown our way. And we'll find out how well we do handle it. Coach, is there anything you and your staff can do you talk about the, there's nothing that replaces the value of playing games, but you have been practicing. Is there anything you and your staff can do to help accelerate shaking off that rust or try to short, shorten that period at the beginning of the game if there is some? No, I, I don't know. I mean, obviously last week once once we found the game was canceled, we obviously adjusted our schedule and, and tried to find some ways to, you know, at least be able to compete and, and put ourselves in those situations, whether it's to make a quarterback make some decisions, make a quarterback make some adjustments, make a lineman, make back end. I mean, we tried to do things that were at least going to challenge us mentally, um, maybe more than we do physically, just because of the sheer fact of, you know, you got to be careful. You'd hate to get, you know, lose guys from, from a practice. Um, but we tried to do that, especially on Friday and Saturday, since we weren't playing a game. Um, you know, but it's there's nothing like playing a game. There's nothing like the the intensity. There's nothing like the you know the, the jitters and the nerves and the things that obviously create some different things for you. That it's really hard to 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 you know create that in a practice. But we uh, we tried as best we possibly could. Anything else, Coach? Yeah, one one quick one here, Coach. I'm sorry. Uh, to jump in here, I know you're about to leave. Um, when, when it comes to this kind of decision, and I don't want to put words in your mouth, but you seem a little bit frustrated by the decision not to play last weekend. How much input do you have in the conversations when you decide to either play a game or postpone a game or cancel a game? How much input did you have in this conversation at, at all when it came to that decision? No, no, I leave it to the people that obviously they can make a cooler uh, decision. They can make a decision with a cooler head, I should say. Um, any coach I would expect is going to um, not be happy when they don't have an opportunity to play a game. You know, the thing I always worried about was guys using um, it to their advantage if they didn't feel like they were at, you know, full strength in order to play a game. Well, I think that's our job as a coach is to get whoever you have ready, and it's not fair to the, the other team. So I actually feel bad for Tulsa more than anything because, you know, they were prepared, they wanted to play. Um, just like us uh, so but they the best thing is is I stay out of it because obviously they know where my head is and know what I want to do and that's why the cooler heads and the guy the medical side of things can make the decision what's best in their eyes and in everybody's eyes for the whole group I look too much at what's best for me the program the guys that are working their butts off and that's why it's really smart when you can trust and believe in those people to let them make the decision and then you just got to go with it doesn't mean you have to like it you know, there's a lot of decisions, whether it's here or at my house, that uh, I don't always like, but I know that uh, I'm going to go with it, and it's probably the best decision in the, in the long run. Coach, you referenced that uh, overtime win a couple of years ago. Obviously, Wiggins had, had the big play. Coming off the injury this season, he hasn't necessarily had any of those <clears throat> big moments yet, but how do you feel he, he's played for the first three games? He's done good. There hasn't been a ton of opportunities. I guess the, the opportunities he's had – um, there were some pretty good plays in, in, in Army. It's just not as obvious. You know, they're coming downhill. They're filling, filling the uh, run, playing inside out, cleaning us up in the back end. Um, I would assume and I would figure and I would believe that uh, those plays are to come because he is a really good football player. He's back to playing um, how we would expect him to play, and it just takes some time. There's got to be some opportunities that are going to be out there. And, um, I'm, I can assure you in this week and the next few weeks, they'll have plenty of opportunities.